Down the Shed! Hi and welcome back to Down the Shed. In this video, which unusually has instructions typically in Chinese, so Google Translate will be coming out, we're going to make this light organ. So if I can get this, you can see a bit of extensive research. I've now come to the conclusion that R19 to R25 are the photoresistors, which you put the little bit of shrink tube on top of to block the light. D1 to D7 are the LEDs, which have got a weird symbol for an LED. So they'll be the white ones. So we've got 10K and 1K resistors either side of those. So that'll be that. We've got this stupid tower piece to build, which is going to be fiddly as hell. They need all soldering together. So they all go, and they're tight as hell, so I wouldn't be afraid to use a small file just to give them a bit of a better slipping. These laser thingies actually sit in here, but twist them clockwise when you're trying to put them in, otherwise they do unscrew, you have been warned. And they, um, they're glued in. That one doesn't seem to tighten even, it just keeps going round and round. Oh, there we go, I've got it tight now. So yeah, you push those into into here like so being careful because I've already pulled one wire off and these are quite sensitive to heat apparently so they'll go in there like that and then solder these down onto here now probably an idea to cut them shorter but we'll do that later they do provide a short glue stick but we've got our own glue guns anyway Uh, not a lot else to tell you from what I've learned so far. We we'll do have a picture here. So we've got the quartz crystal, we've got a couple of capacitors there, three LEDs, three resistors. Uh, basically it's just a case of let's crack on and start populating this puppy. So yeah, the, uh, the chip I've now got pretty much straightened out, as you can see. And the chip holder which was extremely badly bent has now been kind of straightened out so I reckon we'll get that on first actually so remembering the notch which is at this end of the board so we're going to have fun trying to get this in because those legs aren't all perfectly aligned right we have a little bit of fettling and we've got that onto the board right so that's the IC holder in. So with no particular order we've got R15 which is a 10k we've got the blue resistors again so brown black black red brown or brown red black black brown whichever way it is is 10k R27 just here is also a 10k I'm just literally populating bits of the board now. Uh, we have a 10 UF electrolytic capacitor. That's here. But as you can see, it's an elongated box with a shaded side. So the shaded side will be the gray side of the cap. The long legs are positive. That is a 10 UF. So the negative side of the lead goes in the hatching and because we have an elongated box and not a round box we want to lie that down like so. So don't be afraid to pop it out and just give those legs a bit more of a pronounced bend on them. So we shall blue tack those down. So that's those three on the board. There's the other side. So we have, I think we only have one transistor. So we'll put that in next. Q1, I can't see any other Qs. This is more LED than anything else. I'm quite surprised with the, I mean, that's a huge chip to be fair. It's an STC89C52RC. And 
that's in. So we can get all three legs at once. I doubt it. Probably get two. Oh, all three at once. The dude's a player. It's a quick refloat. So that's the transistor in. And we've got four jumpers, which appear to be for reprogramming quite possibly. So we'll just bung one of those in there like that. There we go. And we can pop the rest on. Look, it's just jumping out of this flipping solder at the moment. It's like volcanic solder. So I think the crystal next. While we're on this side of the board. No polarity on that. Ooh, let's get the tweezers. So no polarity on this. Just bung it in. And that is a TQ12 megahertz 6 y FNR. So... All right, I'll do the 230p caps and then we'll call it a day for the minute. So 30p with the number 30 on them. That's definitely a 30, so we'll have that one instead. I have got spare caps from old kits, just in case. Here we go. Snip, snip. That one could go back in. That one's come out slightly, so we'll just remelt him, reflow him, whatever you want to call it. There we go, that'll do. Right, so so far, a couple of 10Ks, crystal, two ceramics, programming pins, electrolytic, transistor, chipboard. Okay, so we've put the speaker connector on. I might have those two switches next. Little momentary micro switches. I've got a shed loads of these somewhere and I can't bloody find them. That's one in. And a bunch of really bright LEDs. I can't find them either. I put them somewhere safe a while ago. And that was the last I remember seeing of them. What happens when you tidy things? I'll have to zoom out a wee bit for those. There we go. So the two micro switches are pushed into place. So that's the switches on board. Uh, it's going quite well now, isn't it? So we've got a five volt power plug and a USB, a USB, a USB there. We've got three red LEDs here. I think that's for low, middle, and high treble bass and mid tones. Controlled by that switch. Got three 1K resistors there, so we shall come back to those. So remembering that the long leg is positive on the LED, the positive is marked on the board along with a square peg, which is an unwritten rule. And I've decided to swap out their crappy little 3 mil red LEDs for red, green, blue. Because it just... I can. And I've put 5 mils in because they fit the board better. Right, so let's blue tack and pop them in. I need to text my mate in a minute before my phone dies. So let's get one leg on each pin so we can check they're straight. And wait for the soldering iron to warm up again. Remember, scrub your tip regularly. A good tip, the uh, the iron came with this gold stuff that quite a lot of people like. And if you use your head and go down to Tesco's, you can find a similar thing, which I've stuck in this old milk jug, for scrubbing pans. And it, I used the silver one and then the gold one. Scrub, 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 scrub. So let's just get one of each down. 
Oh, this one's going to be an arse because it's right in there. There we go. Right, iron off. That is going to be the last part until later. So we'll just snip these down. So there we have RGB, red, green, blue, because it's more fun than three boring LEDs, although they might be a bit tall. I don't know. Yeah, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter because there's nothing going to be in its way. So the other LEDs go along here, but I'm not sure whether to use the ones provided or change them. So I think considering the fact that I could match them, but they've been selected for this kit on purpose, obviously. And I don't want to put something in there that could affect the overall end game. I mean, we're using lasers and light, so I'm going to stick with what they provided on that basis. So, see you shortly. Right, as you can see, I've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 of the 13 10K resistors in. Brown, black, black, red, brown. Or brown, red, black, black, brown. So we'll stick the other 10K in here. Then we have... Brown, black, black, brown, brown, 1K going next to it. So while the camera died, I decided just to get a few of these in. There should be another necessary somewhere. Okay, this sneaky bugger was hiding behind the speaker. So brown, black, black, brown, brown, 1K. So they go, there's three more of them down here. I'll put two in. So there's the third one by the LEDs. I thought I'd save you one of each just to a part of the build guide. It's clearly marked 10K, 1K, 10K, 1K with the R number below it anyway. But half of the point of the builds is for you to see what's going on. So we've got 1K, 10K, 1K, 10K, 1K, 10K all the way along. 1K, 1K, 1K. Not wonky, wonky, wonky. Lol. Okay, so, like I said before, I'm going to stick to the original LEDs because I don't know exactly what their form and function in this kit are and I don't want to cock it up by putting my own LEDs in on this part. This is the important part. So we'll stick with the kit designer's preference so we'll just pop all these in remembering your polarity there is a plus on the board normally it's the minus that's noted longer leg see if I can get that against the board so the longer leg goes in the plus the short legs the minus plus is also the square hole so we'll just blue tap these down remembering do one leg at a time because we do need to keep these fairly dead straight I'm not sure, as I said, of their form and function. They are going to provide some sort of light, obviously. But for where and for why, I don't know. Because the whole idea is the lasers go down into the photoresistors. You break the beam, you make the sound. So let's get these... See, that one's not a little bit. Let's get one leg of these tacked in. Right, they're all good. So we'll do the other legs. just to get a nice decent solder on them there we go uh, that's... so we're almost done with this part of the board we've got the photo resistors to go in the 5 volt barrel plug the USB and we've got to build the top bit so I might zoom you out a little bit so the photo resistors are a bit scary because I'm not sure I'll show you the picture or literally all I've got to go on and I'll zoom you right out for this this is basically all I've got to go on so you can see what the finished product's going to look like and I don't know how well you can see that at the bottom but that's the only guide I've got I mean this is all in Chinese and pretty much if you do the translation it's just telling you 
it's not really giving you much information. Right, so now we'll put the USB. I don't seem to have a barrel plug. I've got everything but the barrel plug. So the barrel plug didn't come included by all accounts. And there's another, we've got another cap here. So I'm just double checking the board now. I think we had a spare capacitor. And I'm missing a barrel plug. I must have one of those somewhere. Right, so I'll put the USB in. Computer jog on. That's an old Lenovo laptop. I'll give you a quick look at it actually. It's not a laptop, my bad. It's an all-in-one desktop. I found that. I found that down the old Tesco's recycling centre when it was there. Just dumped on the recycling bin. Wasn't supposed to be there. Didn't belong there. So I gave it a good home. That became my messing about with computer things i didn't want to do on the good computers or risk you know programs you didn't want to risk putting on good computers and no people it's not porn god get yourselves out the gutter just dodgy programs or things i wanted to experiment with and it ended up becoming the shed computer just to watch youtube and that down here because even 80 feet away from the house i can still get my wi-fi and then it became the down the shed computer for uh, editing and making videos. So lovely. Now I was just warming up that iron as well, so I was actually lucky it soldered. So that's the USB power on. Not quite. That's a bit. We want to get that a bit flatter, I think. Oh, that's getting hot. So let's have a look. Yeah, that's good enough. There's a slight wonk on it, actually. Okay. Right, so that's that. I'm going to pause while I look for a barrel plug. Okay, so we found a bit of a used one. There's three terminals there that I'm not sure about, but I'm just going to give this a... Soldering iron's a bit gloopy. So it's still warming up. Yeah. This solder has gone pretty shit. I'm going to check the soldering iron temperature in a minute. But that is in. So I found a barrel plug. So that's pretty much it for this side of the board. As I said, just the photo resistors. Oldy work zone precision pliers out. Because we have these pieces of board I'm zooming out which have to fit together but they don't do a brilliant job of it I mean they are tight and that sticks out a little bit over the edge so I'm gonna take a tiny bit of material off the edges And a bit off the top. We'll see how that fits. There we go. It's a bit loose now. But that is together. And so these will solder. It's taken a bit too much off. Never mind. That perhaps we should do. So one end will only go in one way and the other end will only go in the other way. So you can't get them wrong. So we'll take a tad off this time. There we go, 
even the tad was a bit much but everyone to their own you can do it your way I've done it my way so as you can see in there let's turn it that way there's a couple of tabs on each side and literally just solder those together and then these will solder to the board down there to down the bottom to make the signal so I'm gonna do the hard bit first but a lot of it is really good kit for the money you can't complain right so we've got these little lasers seven of the buggers and they're going to be a pain in the ass you don't want to get them too hot because it can prematurely damage them or prematurely age them apparently they do unscrew but i wouldn't suggest doing that either but i would suggest holding the base and making sure they're all done up tightly i don't know why they're all undone half undone whether they're supposed to be or not we can always undo them again later focus i suspect i've got no expectations of this actually working this is one of those chinese kits that you just expect not to work and you spend all the time putting it together so you can make another failure video but fingers crossed you never know we could be lucky so i'm going to place these in the board and they've got plus or minus on the board so we know where the red and the blue wires go in uh and then we'll be back so that one's quite fits in quite slim i'd set these on a flat surface and then when you've soldered them in it suggests hot glue gun they provided a glue stick and suggest a lighter or something but i would just literally sit those on there there are tabs there to solder them in but i don't think that's suggestible they definitely say hot glue gun the thing is they've got them sticking right through They've literally got them as far as they'll go like that. So that's what we're going to do. So I push them through down as far as that uh, base will allow. They look like canteen lights that you get in sort of a restaurant, you know, an army style or holiday camp style restaurant bar thing okay so i'll fiddle away with these and when we come back these will all be soldered on well they've soldered these on the top but i'm actually going to push them through and solder from underneath so i'll get that done right okay so if these are too tight to go in what i've figured out is how to screw the barrel there is a spring in there and there is a lens in there so be careful and then screw the barrel one back in like so so i'm just gonna try checking them against them so yeah, they're pretty much close enough. <laughs> they're all pretty much the same distance. I don't think that's going to matter too much. It's just the uh, the angle, of the dangle, the angle of the dangle. Right. So I soldered different to what they did. If you look in their picture, if if you can see that, let me try and check the screen. If you look in their picture, you can see they've soldered on the top of the board. I've soldered on the base. So I'm not going to install this bit yet. I'm going to put that to one side. I'm going to bring the base back in. So this is where the boards are going to join on. So I'll turn that round here and here. Just double checking this board because I am one capacitor spare. Right, we're not going to put those in yet because we haven't done the photo resistors, the scary bit. So cannot find script file program data slash one of those things 8C3D64FE although they put a square peg on the board these are not polarity dependent or not until now 
in my experience. So I don't know how far the leaf is sticking up. I mean, do they go as far as the LED? Uh, they seem to be pretty level, the LEDs. You have to put the sleeve on to cut out the ambient light. I'm going to go on to one of the websites and try and see a colour picture. Right, what I'm going to do is bung one leg on this. And then I think the pictures really aren't helping. I've got a picture, colour picture of one actually powered up. I've got seven white LEDs in front of seven red top hats. But in their picture, they appear to have the photo resistors sat on some sort of flipping collar, which I haven't got. I wonder if the LEDs there just to like create an ambient light above it so whatever comes down is better received okay so now what I'm thinking is if I lay the board down get the other end one in then they'll act as columns or supports keep the height for the other ones so you can just drop them in and literally solder them now we nearly made a boo-boo that's the uh, pillar or column for the other um, upright I'm certainly wondering why there wasn't an LED next to it. You see how much difficult that is? No flux. Look at that, a bit of flux on there, it flows straight in. Now we've just got these two uprights. So one end's got the notch or the female and the other end's got the post or the male. So both ends are opposite. So that still might want a little bit of sanding off afterwards. Let's do a bit of a... Actually, we'll do that first. Hang on. Right, I've sanded the edge down a little bit because it was a bit overlapping. And I've put a blob of blue tack in there. We don't want to solder it yet because we might get the angle a few men out one way or the other and completely crap it up trying to sort it out. So, um... Where's the other one gone? There it is, ah, hiding under the sandpaper. I was going to use one of my files, but I didn't want to dirty it any further. Get a bit of OCD. As soon as you get a tool, you don't want to get it dirty. Oh, get back in, she said. Oh, that's a mouthful. Where's my other bit of blob? Where's my other bit of blob of blue tack? Say that's sober, which I always am. One of you's Extreme Matrix, I think it was you. One of you's suggested I do a live stream drunk. So I now need to solder the insides of them. Well, I've just done the first pad of the other side. I've now got the board upside down in the helping hands of my soldering station. And I've put tape on the outside of the uprights just to hold them in position. Right, that's both 
that side done. This side, I think the camera is actually focused on. But I can't get my light. That's better. I couldn't get the uh, magnifying glass at the right angle to get back in focus. So I'm just going to whack a load of solder on here. Let it warm up. And that should just nicely... There we go. Let's have a look. So we'll get the other... The other one soldered. And I'll just try and do this back to front and inside out. And there we go. That's a lovely joint. Okay, so that's the top one soldered. So now we can kind of get the mangled into the bottom. So we'll remove the blue tuck. Tell you what I'm missing on Forces TV, Hogan's Heroes. Loads of times I just didn't even bother watching it. It came up Hogan's Heroes. I thought they put, showed that bloody film a lot. It's a TV series. It's similar to our um, uh, LOLO in the fact it's set in a prisoner of war camp, although LOLO is coffee. They're still kind of like resistance fighting and whatnot. So while I hold this, I'm going to carry the solder across. So again, I'm going to add block flux in there because the solder will be lacking. I went straight through the hole. Put that one on its side. Always the solder goes straight through the uh, through hole. There we go. So same again with this one, put it on its side. Ow! That time it bloody got me. Can't see it if I put it on its side. Bloody hurt that last one. Got me good. Okay, so... That seems to be almost complete. All I've got to do now is put these little hats on. I think I want to push them just past the photo resistors. Right, we have two more items. Item number one is the speaker. And this one's only on here for test purposes because I've already decided, and I've got them here on the stand. We're going <coughs> to try the same ones that we used on one of these little organs. And I've got some of these for sale. If anyone wants one, leave a comment <coughs> and I'll uh, contact you somehow. We'll figure it out. <coughs> but I'm gonna try that one <coughs> and then this one. I need to get a crap load of double-ended plugs like that. So anyway, speakers in, chip. Now I've pre, if you remember at the start, these were bloody all over the place. I've pre-aligned them. So I should be able to just slot this in with ease. Getting it the right way around, remembering the notch goes with the notch with the goalpost. It's a 89C52RC 401P dip 40. 1419HBF049.C90C. That means something to somebody somewhere. Just gently ease that in. That is the biggest chip I've put into a project so far. Right, I'm going to kill some of these lights because that's going to be counterproductive. We've got this USB cable and this is a laptop. Because the laptop likes to give me a 5 volt power when I haven't got any of my power banks charged up. Nudge the camera. Let's pause the camera. Right, one Android USB cable plugged in to the only working USB socket on my laptop. The other two create power, but they just don't connect up to any data or peripherals. 
So plug in the USB in the correct way. God, I got so used to USB-C now on my Samsung. Was that the correct way? No, that was the correct way before. Right, we have lights. I think it did a self-test. It seems to be a little bit out. Okay, so basically you wanted to try and aim the... Uh, need some sort of base for it. Aim the red lights into these tubes. Into the tubes or the lights? So it's got some sort of self-play on it. So anything I do isn't making any any effect. Well, that's quite novel if you wanted to play tunes by itself. Oh God, it worked. Oh, it needed to put one more on there to get the whole range. So let's have a go at one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. Try and get that bit better alignment. So here we go. So the white lights, the white LEDs are only there to signify which notes being played. Like the video, subscribe to the channel, take care of yourselves and I'll see you in the next one. Get on the shit!